Uh oh, I almost forgot our our music. That would be a tragedy, wouldn't it? There it goes. Oh, not yet, not yet. <laughs> okay. All right. I think I think we're about ready to rock and or roll. Oh. What's up, boys? What's going on? How's everybody doing today? We got some friends joining in. Got some chingus in the chat. Good. I see some people getting in there. All right. Oh, no. Why is my... There we go. It's getting you turned on. Awesome. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's get into it today. So, perfect timing. People are getting in here. I finally have my shit together. Let's turn you down and let's get going. So, first of all, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Live with Jack number 112. And in today's lesson, I'm going to be teaching you how to decode women's texts. But as you already know, I never make anything quite that nice and simple, do I? There's a good reason for that. It's because the more of it you understand deeply, the more you actually understand why these answers are what they are. And then you're able to create your own because you understand the process so well. But if you would like to truly enjoy today's lesson, if you would like to take it to the tippy tip, tip top, reach the height of humanity, the culmination of all of civilization, then all you need to do is grab your glass, your mug, or your flask, a chalice of stein, or even a cask. Raise it high. Let's make it splash. It's time now for our libation bash. Toast the night and enjoy the mood. Together now we drink some booze. On your mark, let's not wait. It's cheers with chaps, so don't be late. Cheers. Ah, magnificent. Whew, man, I've had a pretty rough last few days. Been crazy busy and I am exhausted, but we are here for our lesson. Let's try to get a little more light on us. Can we do that? Make it look a little better. Yeah, I think that's better. And we aren't getting any glare. That's perfect. Good. Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and jump into today's lesson. So, understanding women's texts. This is a huge issue for a lot of guys, especially early on. Whenever I've worked with different clients from around the world, this is one of the things that stumps them every time at the very beginning. And the reason for this is because they think that they need to have like the perfect responses or is this a shit test or do I need to respond to this or anything like that. They aren't understanding the most basic things about women texting. And for us to get there, for us to really understand it, we need to first understand why women text. Because it's not the same as it is for men. Whenever men text each other, it's almost always just an information exchange of some kind. Hey, what are you doing on Friday? Nothing. Why? Cool. You want to go hang out at this bar? Yeah. See you there. Cool. Simple. Easy. Pure information exchange. That's it. Women, it's completely different. It's not like that at all. They text the same way that they talk, which is, this is their bread and butter. This is something that's so important to them that it's literally how they interact with the world. And so they view texts as a form of social interaction and as a form of entertainment. This is going to be really important because, first of all, whenever women are texting, they aren't texting to exchange information at all. That's almost never part of the texting structure there. And if you've ever seen... Uh, if you've ever seen the text storm that a girl can type up and she's running in like five different chat rooms all at the same time, because to her, this is fun. This is entertainment to her. She, she looks at, at a, a list of text chat rooms and you know how you get that kind of like anxiety and you're like, ah, you have like 28 notifications in the last 60 seconds. What is this? This is crazy to her. 
that's like the information screen on the side of the Call of Duty for you, right? That's like the, the, the KD ratios and stuff. And you're just sitting there absorbing all that information. Or if you're if you're into like sports statistics or something like that, where it's just information overload all the time, but it makes sense to you because it's something that you're interested in and something that entertains you. That's how she feels about texting. So the reason this is important to understand is because if you go into texting with a girl, and you don't know what's going on, then you are entering her court. You're entering her frame. And we're going to talk a little bit more about frame later on. But you're entering her court. And not only that, but you aren't good at the game that she's playing. Because you don't know how. You don't know how. You've never been raised to do this. You've never been told to do this. This is not a thing that you've ever practiced. You don't talk this way with guys at all. And so you're basically walking on the court with Michael Jordan, but you're just Johnny from the block. So it's important to understand that if you engage in, in chit chat with her, in text conversations with her, you are at a distinct disadvantage. She's here for social interaction and she's here for entertainment. And if you aren't bringing either of those at a very high level, then she's going to get bored of you fast. This is why a lot of times guys will just have girls and they're like, I don't know, we were talking and then she just stopped answering and she left me on red and she ghosted me, bro, and I don't know what happened. It's like, okay, cool. Let's back up. I don't need to know what you said exactly. What I need to know is, were you entertaining to her? Were you making her laugh? Were you making her feel something? Were you making statements or questions or comments that demanded a response? Because if not, then other people were giving her better social interaction and entertainment. And I'm not even just talking about other guys. Like, yeah, maybe she's texting other guys. Maybe she isn't. But she's definitely texting other girls who are giving her a better version of this than you are. So, of course, whenever you send her a message and it's like, hey, how's it going? And then she looks at that. And she looks at the next chat message over and it's like, oh my God, did you hear about Becky? And oh yeah, that one's entertaining. I'm just going to save that one for later. And then she forgets because honestly, it wasn't that entertaining. It wasn't that interesting. And it just didn't catch her attention. And that's one of the biggest things that guys miss out on when texting is they don't catch her attention early on. The whole purpose of, of texting, period, like the whole thing is only one goal, and it's to get her off of texting and in person. Get her onto a date with you. That's it. Literally nothing else matters. So how do you do that? Well, just like in person, the first thing you have to do is you have to get her attention. And then you have to build curiosity, right? These things are interesting. These things are entertaining. And you can use the entertainment to get the attention, to build the curiosity. You can use the attention and the curiosity to keep it entertaining, but you have to understand where she's coming from on this, which is anytime you send her a boring ass text message, imagine you're taking her away from her entertainment. So let's flip the script on this a little bit. You know that feeling you get whenever you're, you're like watching a movie and you're really into it. And then you get some stupid ass message Somebody sends you a message and they're like, hey, did you have a chance to see that? And you immediately, you're just like, no, fuck that. And then you actually get a little bit annoyed. You get a little bit angry that they interrupted something that you were enjoying doing. That's how she feels whenever you send her a boring ass message. Because even if she's just sitting there messaging other people, that is entertaining to her. That is fun. And you are bringing her fun down. So, first of all, you're not getting her attention. You're not building any curiosity. But more than that, you're actually making yourself look 10 times worse in comparison because you're trying to play on the big kid's playground by trying to have these long, drawn-out text conversations with her when you don't know how. You don't know how to play on this court. And I'm not saying that as a knock against you. So don't take it that way. I'm saying this is not the part of your life that you invested the most time into and it shouldn't be. There's no need for it. It doesn't benefit you in any way when instead you could just cut to the chase, get her attention, build some curiosity, and then you're going to, that's basically your frame here, 
Well, not to return to this. And you're going to create open loops. This is how you create curiosity. Okay, so an open loop is essentially the start of an idea, but I haven't finished it yet. I've made you ask a question in your own mind, or I've brought up a topic, but I haven't yet given you the resolution you're seeking. So this creates an expectation of fulfillment. Any sort of open loop does. Now, actually, I'm using an open loop right now, right this very second. I have an open loop here still about frames. I've mentioned it twice so far, but I haven't yet explained to you what it is or how it works here. All I've said is the frames are very important. We're going to come right back to that in a minute. That's an open loop. So if you were listening and you want to know more about the frames, then you're going to stay because you're curious to find out more. The same thing is true for all of this other stuff. There's a reason that I write these whiteboards the way that I do. And it's because I know that you're going to read ahead and you're going to look at some of the things that I have written, but they're meant to be interesting, but also a little bit vague so that you don't know exactly what's going to come. This builds curiosity. It makes you want to stick around because I have your attention and now I'm building more curiosity. You can do the same thing whenever you're texting girls. And if you aren't doing this, if you aren't creating open loops and building curiosity, then you're boring and you're going to lose to literally anything else. You're going to lose to fucking cat videos. Okay. So if you want to play in the chat game, which you don't really need to, but if you want to, you need to learn how to use open loops and build curiosity. Now let's return to the frames. So frame is basically just the, the, set of assumptions for expected behavior and outcomes in any given situation. That's an overall definition of it. Let me define what that means in this context. So a girl is going into chat messages, into texting, conversations, things like that. She's going in expecting social interaction and entertainment. That is her frame. And her frame is, if you want to keep my attention, if you want to keep me texting with you, you need to provide these things at a high level that I want and that keeps me going. You might have a different frame, right? And I actually recommend that you do. If I go into a text conversation with a girl, my frame is, I just want to set up the date. I want to set up the logistics, make sure that we both understand each other. Everything's good. And then that's it. I'm out of here. I'm not here to be your clown, to give you the entertainment, to give you social interaction. You have girlfriends for that. I don't care. That's not what I do. I can give you plenty of entertainment and interaction together in person. But here, text messages, why bother? That ain't my style. That's my frame coming in. Now, when two frames collide, the stronger one wins every time. This is why guys who don't really know why they're texting a girl, they just think like, oh, well, if I keep talking to her, then she'll like me more, then we'll build a connection, and they have no real end goal in mind, they have no frame. So they get sucked into her frame, which is chit-chat world, which is girl world, and they can't provide the social interaction, and they can't provide the entertainment at the high enough level to actually keep her interested. So what happens? Inevitably, she gets bored of him, and then she just ghosts. She leaves him on red and she forgets about him entirely. Why? Because he just walked into her court, sucked at the game, and then she kicked him out. That's it. Now, if you come in and you just say, hey, new frame, this is what we're doing. I'm coming in to just tell you these are our logistics. This is where we're meeting. This is what time. Awesome. Have fun with the rest of your week. I don't care. I'll see you there. That's a different frame. And that gets us straight to the point. Now, that we understand why women text, what their motivations are, and what's going on in their head, then we can start to actually look at the texts that she sends and break down what some of those things mean and what that actually entails for you. So I've created a list of some of the, some of the issues that guys have whenever they're looking through the texts that girls send. One of them, and this one is the most common, is delayed answers or short answers. If a girl is taking forever to answer you, it, like multiple hours, and I'm not talking about during like work time or something. 
but at a time when you know she's going to regularly be on her phone, if she's taking a long time to answer, or if she's just giving you short little curt answers, basically just a polite response, but with no interest whatsoever, then that means you're boring. That's literally what that means. Either you're boring or she's very uninterested. Or she's very uninterested because you're boring. And I'm not talking about you as a person. I'm talking about you in the text conversation. If you're just sending her the, hey, what's up? How's it going? Yeah? How's your day going? Oh, that's cool. How was work? Just boring shit, right? Shit that you wouldn't even ask strangers. It's that boring. Oh, how's the weather, right? Like, no, you're boring. If you're getting these delayed answers or you're getting short answers, it means that you are sucking at this stuff, right? You are not interesting at all, at least in the text messages. Now, a lot of guys are going to hear this and they're going to be like, no, 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 Jack, 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 you don't get it. You don't get it. This girl, she said she's busy. And I believe her because like she has this job and she's actually like really busy and she's doing stuff all the time. And like, all right, cool. Let's go ahead and address the busy excuse. First of all, I'm fucking busy, right? I work two jobs and I run my own business and I service all the clients and I take all the inbound leads. I do everything. I essentially work three jobs. I work 16 hours a day. And you know what? I am still able to answer text messages. It's amazing. It's magical. It's almost like if something is a priority, you're able to do it. The truth is, if she says she's busy and that's why she couldn't answer you, an hour, maybe a couple hours, yeah, makes sense. It checks out. But if it's regular, nah, she's just not interested, man. She's just giving you a polite excuse, a nice reason for why she isn't answering you because she doesn't want to tell you, bro, you're boring the fuck out of me, man. Like, of course I'm not answering you. You said good morning every single day for the last five days. And I was just like, oh, okay. I don't know what to fucking do with this, right? The busy excuse is, it's just an excuse. It's bullshit. 99.9% um, .9 of the time. Uh, the next one here, emojis and compliments. Okay, so this is one that I've seen guys misinterpret badly, really badly. If you send a girl a message on Instagram and then she hits the little heart reaction, that does not mean she's in love with you. It doesn't even mean that she loves your message. It just basically for girls, that is just acknowledging, yeah, I saw your message. That's it. So don't read into that. Same thing goes with emojis, right? If she sends you back like the, the little smiley face with the heart eyes or something, she's not in fucking love with you, man. That's not what it is. It's just how girls interact. They send that same shit to each other too, right? So don't, don't read into that. Don't think that, oh, because she said this or she clicked this or she sent this emoji, that that means something else. I'm going to teach you something really valuable right now. This is, there are two things for you to take away from this lesson. One, I'm going to tell you now. And the second one, I'm going to tell you in section four. So if you forget everything else in tonight's lesson, listen to these two things. One, right now, do not listen to her words. Pay attention to her actions. That's why the busy excuse is bullshit. It's just an excuse. Same thing with the delayed and the short responses. You know what that's telling you, but you don't want to believe it. So you let her use words to make shitty excuses. And then you like, oh, yeah, okay, I guess I believe it. But you don't really. Because you know exactly what it is. Because you know what those actions mean. Because whenever you do that, you know what that means. Don't listen to the words. Pay attention to the actions. Those will always tell you the truth. That's your first big takeaway for tonight's lesson. Second one comes in section four. Now, next thing to talk about here. Oh, late night texts. Love this one. All right, cool. Late night texts can mean one of two things. Either one, it's a booty call. Or two, you're so far in the friend zone, it could not even be considered a booty call. And that's how she's going to view it. So here's the difference. Let's break this down. First of all, 
if it's a text that she's opening brand new past midnight, it's probably a booty call. If it's a text she's opening the conversation, like starting a new conversation after 2 a.m., it is almost certainly a booty call. And you can guarantee it with the hay test. Do you guys know the hay test? This one's fun. I love this one. I love this one. If she sends you hey, and it's just H-E-Y, oh, you are friend zoned as fuck. You're friend zoned. If she sends you like, hey, with two Ys, uh, maybe, maybe there's a thing. Maybe she's feeling it out. But if she sends hey, with three Ys or more, that's a booty call. Guaranteed. That's all that it can be. That's all that it is. The hey, especially after 2 a.m., that's a booty call. The exception to this is if she if she opens that message and then she starts talking about another dude. She's like, you wouldn't believe what Jaden said to me, what he did. Oh, my God. He did it. Nope. You're friend zone, buddy. You're the emotional tampon. She's dumping this shit on you because all her friends don't want to fucking hear it. And her parents are asleep. So guess what? She knows that you're going to simp for her. So, of course, she's just going to dump it on you. Careful of that. Uh, next thing here. Sudden increase in messages. Okay, cool. So this is something that I've heard a few times from guys when they're trying to figure out. Like, uh, we were texting before, but now, suddenly, she's messaging me a lot more than she was before. Does this mean she's into me? All right. This one and also the next one here, if she ghosts you and then comes back, these can be read a couple of different ways, um, especially on the coming back part. But most likely, well, no, there's not even a most likely here because it depends on the situation. But either she's bored and you are the best entertainment option available right now or, or she is more interested in you now than she was before. So. If, I know you want it to be the second one. I know you're going to want that, but you have to ask yourself, what could possibly be that? Because what, what could be the reason for that? Because it's never like, oh, well, she must have just seen. Suddenly, she sees the light of how wonderful and amazing I am. She sees that I am truly the knight in shining armor who she deserves. No, it's none of that shit. All right. So if there's a sudden increase in text messages, after a date or after you guys meet up sometime, then yeah, she's probably much more interested in you. But if you guys haven't met and like you're just kind of talking, you're chatting, you're still trying to play the chit chat game. And then suddenly she just starts messaging you a lot more than normal one night. She's probably just bored. You guys haven't met. There's no reason for her to have increased attraction for you. She's probably just bored, man. Because as we're going to talk about in a little bit, you cannot. You cannot build attraction through text. Cannot happen. You can lose attraction through text, but you cannot increase your attraction level through text. You can build interest. You can build curiosity. Absolutely. But not actual attraction. So increase in texting. Same with like coming back from ghosting. Unless there is some reason that you can clearly define as, yes, this is probably why. We met in person, we had a great date, and now she's texting me a lot more. Okay, then yeah, she's more interested in you. But otherwise, she's probably just bored. Now this next one, ghosting and coming back. This is such a major red flag, especially if it's for more than like two days. If she doesn't message for a day, shit happens, right? Like, okay, maybe sometimes, uh, fine, whatever. If she gives you a shitty excuse, like if she says something like, oh, my phone died, lol. <laughs> okay. She, she's just bullshitting you, right? But if she just says, sorry, like I got backed up with a whole bunch of stuff. Apologies. Anyway, let's pick up where we left off. That's fine, right? But if she's ghosting for more than a day at a time, dude, she's so bored of you and she's literally just looking for anybody else. And then maybe she goes out with some other people and then whenever they're done with her, then she comes back to you and she's like, oh, okay, cool. You're still here. You can entertain me. This is something that happens a lot to dudes who are in the friend zone, but they refuse to admit that they're in the friend zone. They're like, no, I'm not. She really, she's interested in me. Like, yeah, maybe she's seeing other people, but we're not in a relationship, so it's okay. It's not like it's cheating or anything. Bro, she's just not interested in you, right? She's just using you for free entertainment and validation. That's all that it is. 
So if you get a lot of this, this go see and coming back, that kind of bullshit, move on, right? Don't waste your time with her. Uh, this next one is interesting. Question overload. So if a girl starts asking you a lot of questions, it could be that she's trying to flirt, but she's really bad at it. And she's also heard the same shitty advice that you've heard, which is like, oh, well, if you're interested in somebody, you should talk to them about themselves because everybody's favorite topic is themselves. Like, yeah, it's true, but kind of shitty advice because nobody explains how to do that. Anyway, she's trying to ask questions because maybe she's trying to flirt and she doesn't know how to do it well. Okay. Here's the thing. With a situation like this, you can probably just let it ride and play with it. But what she really wants, what she's trying to get you to do, is she's trying to get you to take control of the conversation. And she's just like throwing you ideas and like, what about this? Here, take this, fucking run with it, make something happen. I'm bored. I need entertainment and social interaction. And I don't know how to make that for myself. Can you please make this conversation fun? I want to like you. And all you need to do is stop fucking simping. Okay. Speaking of which, let's get into the texting mistakes that guys make when they are not understanding these things correctly. Because there are some pretty big mistakes in here that I've seen a lot of guys make. The first one, the text wall. You guys know the text wall? Yeah, you've probably sent the text wall before, haven't you? It's a mistake every single time. Sometimes like a girl will ask you something. She's like, oh, how was your weekend? And then you send her back like, oh, it was great. I went and I met up with this person on this day at this time. And then we went to this place and we had and just go on. You just answer like a simple question with a huge fucking paragraph. Cut that completely. Listen, whenever it comes to, to texting lengths, uh, basically aim to match her energy level. Oh, my guitar. There we go. Aim to match her energy level. So if she's sending like one sentence messages, give her back one sentence messages or so, roughly. Doesn't need to be exact. We're not going down to like letter count or word count or anything stupid like that. Don't try to make rules out of this stuff because that's not how this works. It's about matching energy. So instead of responding back with a text wall of, yeah, I went to these places and, da, 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 and then all of that stuff, instead, you want to keep it short and simple and redirect. Okay? So explain. She says, hey, how was your weekend? You say, it was great. Actually, I hung out with the guys and we found this new whiskey bar. I should take you there and show you sometime. I think you'd love it. Actually, how about Friday? Cool. A little bit longer than the message she sent, but still short enough, still matching the energy level, still direct, and it redirects the question to let's meet up in person because that's the purpose of texting. The next thing is guys get overexcited about anything, about any sort of attention that they're getting from the girl. And so this... I've seen this thing where like a girl will, I, I mentioned this earlier with the emoji thing, right? Where a guy will send a message and then the girl will like put a heart on it to basically acknowledge it. And then the guy will start hearting every single one of her messages back. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Slow down, man. Slow down. I've probably told this story before, but there's the story of the two, the two bulls who walk over the hill. There's an old bull and a young bull. And they look down into the valley below. And they see just a valley of beautiful cows everywhere. And the young bull says, hey, let's run down into the valley and fuck one of the cows. And the old bull says, let's walk down and fuck them all. This is the difference. You run down, you're so overexcited, you're so eager, you're needy, you're desperate. And that's how it's going to come across. Even if you're not actually needy or desperate, it's how it's going to come across. So slow down. Walk down the hill and fuck them all. Don't get too excited about things. Uh, the next one, this is these these two go together here. The the basic bitch questions and the chit chat. Listen, toss out the basic bitch questions entirely. All of this, like, oh, so what are you interested in? So what do you like to do for fun? So what's your favorite hobby? <laughs> 
Like stupid shit like that, that you might ask a stranger on an airplane that you're stuck sitting next to. It's fine there, but it's not attractive. It's not interesting. It doesn't build any sort of connection, any sort of rapport, nothing. If you want to know what sports she likes, ask her a more direct and pointed question. Say something like, hey, do you like rock climbing? And she says, um, yeah, I do. Or, uh, no, actually, I've never been. And then if you like rock climbing, like if this is a thing that you want to ask, I'm just giving an example. Don't copy paste this unless it works for you. Okay. She says, yeah, I do. Or I, I don't know. I've never tried. And you say, oh, well, that's cool because I know this, this really good rock climbing gym in town that's great for beginners. We should go there sometime and I'll show you the ropes. But um, get it? Because it's rock climbing, ropes. Yeah, no, okay. Dad jokes, not landing. Dang, all right. Tough crowd. Have fun with it, but you're taking the point and you're redirecting. You're redirecting. So instead of asking her a basic bitch question, what are you interested in? What do you like? You're basically saying to her, do you like this thing? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, well, I want to do that as a date. Let's make that happen. That's all. Because again, the whole point of texting is to set up the date. Same thing goes with chit chat and the basic bitch questions. Toss it out. You're not trying to get to know each other through messages. You're not trying to get to know each other over chat. Anything that you can say in chit chat in a message, you can say in person on the date. So all of that extra stuff, all of that, hey, let's talk about, you know, your family and like, oh, where did you go to school? How was it there? Oh, was it was it interesting in that city? I Save it for the date. Save it for the day. Because remember, you are not a professional chit-chatter. She is, and all of her friends are. And if you try to engage in this game, if you try to get on the court with the, with the fucking 86 Bulls, you're out, right? You don't stand a chance. So don't go into woman land on this. It, it will not go well for you. Uh, next thing, starting every time. If you're starting the conversation every single time, She's not into you, man. Look, if if you're messaging her every single day, but every single day you have to start it, and then if you don't message her, then no messaging happens, she's not into you. She's just politely entertaining you, right? She's just allowing you to talk to her, basically. And if that's happening, you're probably getting delayed or short answers, right? She's not into you. Move on. Forget about it. Or... Maybe you stop messaging her and then she sends a message back because now suddenly she misses talking to you. She's interested in you. Maybe she has only one way to find out. But if you're starting it every single time, it's not going to work well, right? She's not interested. Uh, the only exception to that is the very beginning because guys will have to initiate the conversations except on Bumble. But even then, they still basically have to initiate the conversations because the girls just message, hey, what's up? How's it going? They do all the same basic bitch shit that they don't want you to do. But it doesn't matter. They're basically just saying, let's have the conversation, right? So anyway, if you're starting the conversation every time, something majorly wrong. The next thing, this is a huge mistake. I've seen guys do this so many times, and it does not help you at all. They get butthurt. And by that, what I mean, that, that is a scientific term for turning into a little bitch because a girl didn't do the thing that you wanted. Because she didn't say what you wanted. Because she didn't like your answers or whatever else. Like, stop. Don't get butt hurt. I've seen guys do this thing where they go from, like, complimenting a girl and, like, yeah, I think you're so cool and I think you're so sweet and we'd be great together. And then she says, hey, look, slow down. I don't see you that way. I'm not interested. And then he turns into fucking Mr. Hyde and he, yeah, I can't believe you. You're such a bitch. And that, right, right, right. And like, stop. That's That's some nice guy shit that we talked about two weeks ago. You got to cut that shit out entirely. No getting butt hurt over a fucking text message. You're a grown ass man. Don't throw a toddler like temper tantrum. Don't ever do that. There's, this is an important point here because it's not just about the getting butt hurt thing. Listen, no woman will ever be able to like or love a guy who she cannot respect. And nobody's going to be able to respect a man who throws a fucking temper tantrum because the, because the girl from down the street didn't want to go on a date with him. Like, Nobody respects that man. She can't respect you. Then she can't like you. So don't give her that reason. Just walk away with your dignity intact. Okay, cool. Later. And that's it. And then you're gone. Nothing bad. 
All right, uh, next thing, we already talked about this one a little bit. You cannot build attraction through text. You can't. You can only build interest and curiosity. Actual attraction is only built and developed in person. There are a lot of reasons for this. Pheromones, physical touching, physical sensations, uh, body language, subtext, all the things that actually turn a woman on that actually make her attracted to you, those are all in-person things. Everything else, everything through text is just Attention, interest, and curiosity, that's it. It can never get to attraction. You cannot build attraction through text. The next thing here is, oh, this is the biggest mistake of all. The number one mistake that guys make is they don't ask for the date. They just keep on pushing it off, pushing it off. And they're like, oh, I'm trying to build rapport or some bullshit like that. No, you're not. You're just being a pussy. You just don't want to ask her for the date because you might get rejected. And that's true. You might. It's okay. It's all right. If you get rejected, it's okay. No problem. Because remember, we're not getting butthurt about things. If you get rejected, though, it gets to save you the time and the mental energy of having to deal with all the chit-chat bullshit that you're engaging in and that you're losing at because this is not your home court. So get out of that stuff. Ask for the date. Everything here needs to be redirected towards asking for the date, setting up the date. It's all about the date and that's it. And that actually brings us to section four, where you're going to learn the second big takeaway. See what I did there with the open loop? You're going to learn the second big takeaway for tonight's lesson, which is it's all about the fucking date. Nothing else matters. Forget everything else. Focus on the date. Set up the date. Set up the logistics. When are we going to meet? Where are we going to meet? What are we going to do? Awesome. Are we both driving there? Am I picking you up? Are we taking a bus there? Are we? How are we getting there? That's it. Once we know the time and place, we're confirmed on that. Cool. See you there. Looking forward to it. That's it. And then you escape. Because nothing else matters. It's all about the date and that's it. Now, I do need to warn you. This is an important thing. I've talked before about the three-day rule. Never forget the three-day rule. From the time you first meet to the time you're on the date, you have three days, 72 hours. That is the most important rule for actually having successful dates. But if you want her to show up for the date, do not schedule a date more than three days out. Regardless of, of the first meeting, first matching, fine. Let's put that to the side for right now. If you're scheduling something for a week from now, the chances that she forgets or that she plans over it or that something comes up or that she's just feeling fucking sick or whatever else, that all goes way up. Plan the date for maximum three days away. Even if, if you're talking to her on a Monday, and you're going for the date, latest it can be is Thursday. That's it. You've got Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. That's it. Those are your options. Any more than that, even if you say like, oh, but Jack, the weekend's better. Let's plan it for Saturday. I'm, I am telling you from experience, if you set up a date, start, you're talking on Monday and you set it up for Saturday, the chances that she actually shows up and that everything's good is low. It's significantly lower than if you had set it for say Wednesday, because that's closer. You want to set the date as close as possible. This is the most important thing. So like I said, second big takeaway tonight, it's all about the fucking date. Nothing else matters. Keep your eye on the prize at all times. If any texting that you're doing, if any questions you're asking, if any answers you're giving, do not either directly or indirectly serve the purpose of getting you on the date, then it's a waste and you need to abandon it entirely, forget it, and redirect to getting on the date. Now, the next thing that I want to point out here, this is a big thing. Uh, notifications equals needy. So what I mean by this is a lot of times whenever a guy starts talking to a girl and he's really interested in her, maybe she's interested in him, maybe she's not, eh, we're not sure. Maybe she's giving him kind of slow responses, but they aren't that bad. And so he's making excuses for her in his head, but she's answering him back, say every 45 minutes to an hour. But every time she answers, he's immediately Sup! there, do, 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 going right back because he's paying close attention and then he's checking every three minutes oh did she message back did she message back why isn't she messaging back what's going on here what's going on what's going on what's going on you are being needy as fuck no matter what happens here right you're being needy and 
she can smell it. I've seen guys do this thing, do this exact thing, and then they will like intentionally wait 12 hours to message back. But the girl knows. She knows. You're being needy. You're acting needy. You smell needy. And she can smell that on you. She can see that in your messages, even though you're like, oh, but Jack, I'm being very careful. And I'm crafting my message perfectly. And I'm sending it to 10 different friends and focusing on the we're focus group testing every single text message and every single word. But shut the fuck up, man. You're being too needy. You're too focused on this. You're trying too hard. You need to slow down and stop. Here's how you do that. Turn off the notifications. It's actually better if you just put your whole phone on silent, 100% silent. That's better. But if you can't do that for some reason, maybe you need it on for work, whatever, turn her notifications off. Put her specifically on silent so that you stop checking it. At first, your brain's going to freak out and it's going to be like, ah, I have to keep checking it now. I have to keep opening my phone and checking because I know I won't get the notification. And after a couple of times, your brain will chill the fuck out. And then you'll start doing things that actually matter to you, that actually take more of your time and take more of your focus. And then you'll start to forget it. And then whenever you do eventually go back to your phone and you check, if there's a message there, cool. And if not, doesn't matter. You've already forgotten about it. So it doesn't matter. You turn the notifications off and you will prevent that needy behavior that's turning her off and that's sending her away every time. Now, the next thing I want to talk about here is length and frequency. So the length of the text messages I kind of talked about earlier with the text walls. You want to, again, match the energy there. You don't want to be sending long-ass paragraphs and stories, especially if she's just sending single sentences or even worse, one-word responses. But if she's giving long responses, that's fine. You can kind of match the feel and the energy or not, right? You can, if you send her less than she's sending you, that is always okay. If she's sending you paragraphs and you're sending back one sentence, that's fine. Totally good. Next thing is the frequency here, which the basic rule to this is you send two messages for every three that she sends. That's not a hard and fast rule. So don't try to stick to this like, well, I already sent her two messages and she's only sent me back two. So I can't answer her yet. Don't do stupid shit like that. I'm talking about in the overall sense, the, the larger average. You want her to be messaging you a bit more than you're messaging her. That's the ideal for frequency. You can talk every day if you must, but... You honestly don't even have to do that, especially if it's early on in an interaction. Maybe you guys just matched or you just met her on the street, or maybe you got her number by using the magic four-line script that's included in the two-day date dare mini course, which you can find just below the like button on this video. And you can learn the magic four-line script that will get you a date set up in 10 approaches or less. Maybe that's how you met her and you know, you're still getting things set up. You don't need to message every day. You just need to get the logistics set up for the date. And once you set up for the date, that's it. You're done. Then go to the date, right? Because you set it within three days. And so it's just right there. It's right around the corner. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about here is that less is more. I realize that this might sound a little bit hypocritical coming from a dude who's been going on fucking navel gazing for about 45 minutes straight about this shit so far. But Hear me out. Whenever it comes to text messaging, especially with girls, less is more. I don't mean ignore her or don't message her at all or anything like that. But whenever you're sending messages, don't get overexcited. Don't get over eager. Just tell her what you need to say. Keep your frame strong. And the frame should just be, I'm here to set up the date and to get our logistics set. And then you can go back to your text storm with the girls. That's fine. But I just want to get this thing out of the way first. And then you just go off and go on about your way. Less is more. You're a little bit slower to respond. It's fine. That's usually better than being too quick. Same thing. You text a little bit less often than other guys. Great. That's better than too much. You text shorter than most guys. Great. That's better than too much. 
it's always better than too much. Less is always better than too much whenever it comes to texting. Take that lesson and our two takeaways, right, that I gave you today and use those. Do you remember the takeaways? Number one was listen to her actions, not her words. The actions always tell you the truth. And two, it's all about the fucking date. Keep your eye on the prize. Good. So as long as you've got those and you just remember less is more, you're going to be fine. Now, with all that said, and now that you know how to text girls like a fucking pro, it's time for us to get into the best part of the night, which is the live Q&A with the player panel. And tonight, we have a full panel. Let's go ahead and bring everybody in. You ready, Big Pablo? I'm going to turn off the recorder up here and put us down. Hey, guys. What's going Not on, much. cool kids? Not much. Just here. Perfectly fine. How about you guys? Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Been a busy couple of nights. Yeah, this is exciting. I don't remember the last time we had this many guys on the call. This is fun. At this point, yeah, it's finally a back. Bang bang. <laughs> hmm. All right. So. Uh, let's just go ahead and jump into it then. And by the way, uh, for you guys watching on the live stream, if you have any questions, put them into the chat and Paul will put them up onto the screen for us so that we can answer them live for you. Uh, what's our first question for the evening, boys? So the first question for the evening is, what things should be you be aware of if you're texting with a girl who has limited English versus a native speaker? For instance, sometimes I text a girl and I can't tell if her dryness is a matter of her not being interested or if it just doesn't speak good English. Less is more. I like if I'm if I'm gonna text a girl who let's say that she's Korean, right? Because other than Antonio, we've all done at least some dating here in Korea. And yeah, like her English isn't perfect. It's not her first language. You don't need to be texting her stupid shit, right? Just text her, hey, I know this really cool place. I'm going to take you there. You like good beer? Yeah. Awesome. Let's meet here at this time, right? You just keep it simple. The rest you can do in person with body language and subtext. I don't know. What do you think, Julius? I have a question, though. Do you think like languages, like for example, language barriers could be a problem when dating like a foreign girl or something, or not at all? Never. Uh -huh. Let's say I wanted to meet this German girl, right? And we like we liked each other, we talked and stuff, but then we had problems speaking or communicating. Do you think that's a problem? Why would you have problems speaking or communicating? Exactly, no, and I'm... it will only really be an issue in a long term going on six months plus relationship and by then you figured out a solution right yeah. like in your example there germans speak english dude germans speak better english than italians do like you'll be fine <laughs> i wouldn't sweat it one bit that language barrier is there are some times it's very rare, but there are some times when there's actually a language barrier issue, right? Like I dated, I dated one girl who legitimately did not understand or speak any English, only Korean. And so I was trying to get by in Korean and like, we got by for like three months. But like Paul was saying, it only becomes an issue if it gets to that point of it's a serious relationship. And by then, You've either figured out a solution or you've just accepted that, like, this isn't going very far, right? I I don't I don't think that that's – it's not actually an issue like people think. No, I, right. I was just curious. I mean, I see – also, another question I had, what do you think about long-term relationships? No, no sorry, long-distance relationships because I see this trend going on. Let's put a pin in that and let's come back. Yeah. I want to deal with the, the, the language questions here first. Um, 
Julius, I know you've done you've done more dating in Korea than Paul has. Mm. So, like, like, what, what are your thoughts on that with like texting? Oh well, I mean, <clears throat> if she likes you, she's gonna respond to you. Um, and if she really likes you, she's gonna meet you. So if she's gonna meet you, then you know, if if her English is non-existent or just not very really good, then you know what's what's the big deal if her responses aren't as well thought out and well written as yours. I I've I'm sure I've stated it before. I've you know met girls who just didn't speak my language at all. And so I would use Google Translate before Papa Go was a thing. And that's what I used when I met her and, and it, you know, success happened that night. So uh I, I really yeah of course and, and, but it's also one of those things that like um the it, it's also how confident you are in this like any a lot of guys would completely screw up being like oh hey look look at what i put i'm gonna make you laugh but with the body language and the confidence you give and and, and the positivity you have in yourself and in the situation you're in then you know she'll she, she'll be comfortable and of course you know soju always helps yeah 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 yeah. And I think if you go back to the question, it it's like the asker is asking whether or not like the lack of or the dryness in the text messages is a sign of like them losing interest or no interest. And like to me in general, that sounds like okay, this guy is trying to convince or have a conversation over text. Which, mm. if you l just listen to the lesson anyway, you shouldn't be doing. Like, you should ask her out on a date, and Have most a likely, in yeah, exactly. And if you actually do what we teach and like actually ask her out, you'll see if she's interested or not because she's gonna say yes or she's gonna say no. Yeah, and um, the last thing I like because I have also had a couple of these where it's like their English is just terrible. And if their English is terrible and it doesn't sound like Google Translate, then she's not even putting in the effort and probably don't care. But if it sounds like the message looks like it's literally a copy paste from Google Translate and you can kind of see that it is Google Translate, she is actually trying to make a message come through, which is eventually what is standing in the translated message. How long do you think is the right amount of time before you can ask her for a date? Like when you see the signs that you feel like she's interested, like just well, like first of all, if she gave you your phone number, that's right away. My number one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dating app. Okay, message number three. Then you're starting to be late. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, 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 right away. Anyway. Straight up. So basically, right. I'm like. <laughs> I'm basically guilty of all these mistakes because I used to do that stuff where oh, I tried to... We probably all are at some point. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've all done I've done every single one of these. I don't know if you guys could see her name. I don't want to... You have remember. to put it... Yeah. Yeah, okay. But yeah, it, her English is so bad. She put her entire Korean name as like one name in, in English. Oh. And yeah. <laughs> that's why I was trying to hide the, the number. So, I mean, it's not even her number anymore. But still, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you get her number, um, you're basically guaranteed to see her again if you make it happen. If you ask yeah. out, tell yeah. your plan. Um, so it shouldn't be an issue at all. Yeah. Now, if you like uh, add a coworker's number when she didn't know because you're part of a group chat, then and that's kind of weird, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I used to think the whole opposite. I, I've also been in this situation where. I've been with the girls until 4 a.m. And I thought, okay, I got this girl in the bag. <laughs> Just realized oh, a couple of weeks later, she always saw me as a friend. And I got, get, you know, in Italy, we say when we get something that is not expected, we got a medal of holding the head, literally, because I expected the whole opposite of her being like, oh, all right, she's definitely interested in me. While I didn't yeah. see the logical signs that she was talking either about some other guy, and still I couldn't see that she was seeing me as a friend and stuff. And I used to get her angry with them. I used to even insult them in my mind because I was kind of a fucking child. I'll admit that. But then, after all, all the whole situation that has happened, 
I just realized, shit, Jeff is right. All right? Like, <laughs> this is what I'm talking Like, every single word that he speaks and everything that he says just fucking resonates with everything that happened right now. We like, can probably, yeah. like, drill this down to, like, one very, very short sentence. 72-hour rule. Yeah. 72-hour rule. Three-day rule. Oh, yeah. yeah. If it doesn't the, happen, then... The, the second you first meet, the clock is started. That's it. You need and not schedule a date by then. Be on the date within 72 hours. You if if I see a girl and I'm interested in her, and I go up to her and I start a conversation, we chat a little bit, and I tell her I want to take her out for drinks. She has a choice right now. Am I interested in finding out more about this guy? See if there's something or not? Or, no, I'm not interested. That's it. I'm not going to waste any more time than, what, two minutes. Because a girl knows within 30 seconds, she knows which bucket you are in for her. She knows immediately. Yes, this is a guy who I'm willing to give a chance or no. From the moment they see you, you say... Literally under 30 seconds. Mm. Within 30 seconds. Now, <clears throat> not just from seeing you, like that, that is a big part. Literally, your visual appeal or lack thereof is a big part of it. But she's usually willing to entertain like 30 seconds maximum of okay, cool. Maybe he's really fucking clever, really witty, really charming, really something. But other than that, man, she knows immediately. So you start up the conversation, you follow the four-line script, and in under two minutes, you've asked her out on a date. She will say yes or no. If yes, take the phone number and then text her the details for the date. You're on the date within three days. If she says no, cool, no problem, have a good day, and you move on. You've only wasted 90 seconds of your time. That's it. It's legitimately that simple. Like, that's I'll, all there is to it. I'll Take an example from a real life text message that I done. Yeah. And so I get her number at twelve thirty a.m. Or okay. Yeah, yeah that's a.m. Right, like after midnight. Yeah. Midnight thirty. Uh, yeah. And then the next day, I send her one message. So I've that's the timestamp I have when I've written "Hey, cool girl" and sunglass emoji. Yeah, I get a wavy emoji back, and then nothing. Then at 5 p.m. the next day, I start again. Hey, cool girl, winky face. I had the most crazy idea. If you're free tonight, want to grab dinner? And that girl is cur currently sitting in the living room here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that easy. It's yeah. that easy. It's yeah. just literally the first text message I ever sent to her after I got the number was, hey, when I go on a date. Yeah. Like, there's no excuse. And that was same day date. And even yeah, the, the hardest part, yeah, in my it. opinion, is the anxiety and fear or of rejection or your very first enemy. I mean, you guys make it sound so easy. But then when like fear of rejection or anxiety or stuff comes into place, it becomes like 100 times harder. You just gotta go into it. I like, I like this philosophy. Uh, so the philosophy, like at least my philosophy, like I am going there for dinner, whether she says yes or no, and what happens after depends on that, of course. If she doesn't come, okay, then I go out drinking, perfectly fine. Like that's mm -hmm. my plan for the day, and then she can try convince me otherwise. Yeah. Julius, I think you were saying something, and uh, and you got cut off there. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I was saying that uh, the hardest part, in my opinion, isn't uh, getting the girl to come up, but getting the, the number in the first place. It's because you got to make the approach, successfully talk to her, and then convince her to get her number. Um, and in which case, then you can just start planning and messaging her and, and, and going out and such. So once you get over the anxiety of uh, rejection and any of that stuff, you know, approaching people, talking to them, and getting their numbers really doesn't isn't too hard once you just get over that fear. One of the things that I found useful, I, I like to use mental reframes all the time. I, I use them for 
everything because you can't you can't logic yourself out of a position you got to emotionally but if you change the way that you look at something then you can emotionally get yourself out of it so let me give you an example if you're anxious about being rejected there are a few different reframes that you can take here one you could say like if I don't approach her, then I'm rejecting myself. And that doesn't feel good. I would rather take some percentage chance over a 0% chance. And rejecting myself sounds awful. I wouldn't ever want to do that to me. And I would never tell anybody else to reject themselves either. That sounds really unhealthy. So I have to do the approach for my own mental health. That's a mental reframe you can take. Another one you could take if you self-identify as like, I'm a feminist and I believe that women have the right to choose things. Okay, cool. Awesome. Then in that case, stop making the choice for her. Let her make the choice of whether she wants to be with you or not. Because if you don't do the approach, you are literally making the choice for her that she doesn't get to be with you. And that is very, very chauvinistic and very anti-feminist. And I would never, ever be chauvinistic or anti-feminist. I believe women should absolutely have that. See, I'm pro-choice. I believe that they should be able to choose to be with me or not. Mm, that's how progressive I am. I have to give them the chance to make the right decision. So you can, you can emotion your way out of things by reframing stuff. But if you try to do it purely through logic, it will never succeed because you cannot out-logic emotions. An emotional position cannot be logic with. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does for me. Yeah, you, you have to find an emotional trigger that works for you, whether it's the like it, it's the, the, the feminist view or the uh, or the, the view of like, I don't want to reject myself. Or if you just literally reframe the physical feeling in your body, this isn't approach anxiety. This is approach excitement. I see a girl and. I'm so excited to talk to her that it's literally giving me butterflies in my stomach. I cannot wait to make this approach. I need to do it. That's another emotional reframe. And that helps you escape the negative emotional frame you had before. Now, earlier Antonio asked a question. Yeah, I did. About long distance relationships. Yeah. I wanted to ask you your opinion on that, but I'm going to guess that is shit probably. Paul, as our resident long distance relationship, <laughs> relationship would you like long to be able to first? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think long distance relationship, they can definitely work, but you need to set the expectations and kind of the ground rules for it when you start. It has to be a very like clear thing. And for reference, like the girl I'm dating, she is living in Korea. Uh, I live in Norway right now. Since we met, she has been here two times, and I've been to Korea two times. And um, yeah, like we try to make it a rule like at least one of us will travel every three months so that at least we get to see each other on a regular ish basis. But yeah, it, of course, we are doing the extreme, right? Like between us, there is what nine and a half thousand kilometers it mm -hmm. takes. Uh, 20 hours to get one way yeah. if i'm a european what happened? If I... no we're still dating she's in the living room right now yeah she's oh, in my she's living room, room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah she's there right now damn i never uh, thought of a long distance relationship before uh, and then what i would say is that like if you're living in europe i wouldn't even i would call it a medium distance relationship because you can literally fly over anywhere in europe every single weekend if you want to like Ryanair. <laughs> yeah for example or the new like eastern european one Wissair. oh that sounds <laughs> fancy <laughs> yeah so, so you can literally fly anywhere in europe for probably a hundred bucks every weekend mm. uh so like if cheap. you have yeah it's very cheap uh so I don't think that is such a big problem if it's, I would say if you can fly there within three to four hours, you can be there. You can come every Friday night and you can fly either early morning on Monday or you fly Sunday night, right? It's not an yeah. issue. 
uh, it is more about what you want to invest into the relationship. Uh, so I think that is something people would have to go into themselves for. And I've had it work. I have both had it work and I have flown to Korea and gotten dumped while in quarantine. Like I have done it both. Right. So it depends entirely on who you're with and you have to be open and actually have a conversation about it. And you need to be good both in the terms of trusting each other, but also in the way of communicating when you How are. How long have you been with this girl again? Uh, now it's been over a year. Or it's oh, been right. a year. No, you told me that. Uh, yeah, over a year. yeah, no, I've never yeah. tried having a long distance relationship before, but I've always been skeptical because, okay, I'm in this relationship. What, when the fuck am I going to see her? How is it going to work out and stuff? It's probably because of inexperience and stuff, but I will definitely give it that a try in the future if that happens, honestly. No, I wouldn't <laughs> make it my goal to have a long distance relationship. Yeah. I would it's... rather take a relationship and then accept it being long distance to if necessary. If necessary. Yeah, if, it, if it's a long-term one that you guys have been together a while, then I'd be like, okay, well, I don't want to just give up on it, right? Then you do it. But it's, yeah, you don't go into it going, okay, well, I'm leaving long distance first month. Like, Yeah, that, you, you don't, you don't fly to London for a week and find yourself a girlfriend and then go back home. Yes, now we're in a long distance relationship. That's mm -hmm. not something you do. Yeah. No, you just, what, what happens in London stays in London. <laughs> Especially all the stabbings. Oh, yeah. Well, aren't there more of those in Seoul? No. <laughs> I don't. That's think a so. reversal. <laughs> I don't think so. But anyhow, uh, to the long distance relationship point, I would avoid it if possible. But the only way you can be in one is if you're already in a serious relationship anyway, right? Um, Paul's situation, I think, is genuinely unique because the girl he met is unique, but also just Paul's situation is unique, wherein he can come to Korea fairly regularly. Uh, she can come out to Norway fairly regularly they can make these things happen and they already knew what it was before they got started but yep. then they chose to get serious anyway so all of that stuff was clear it was all well communicated it was planned so it, it, was, uh, also, it was also set up in such a way that like okay cool we will absolutely give this a try but if it doesn't work for whatever reason, we both accept that from the get-go. Like, yep. again, very unique situation. Most people aren't as good at being upfront and communicating as Paul is. Yeah, right. No, that makes sense. So you say that they only work out if you're in a, in a relationship in the first place. And you just yeah. work it out. Yeah, yes, right. Yeah. Pretty serious one at that, yeah. I feel. Yeah, exactly. you have, you, have you ever been in one before? Me? Yeah, yeah. many. <laughs> yeah, I'm the king of long distance. Um, now, Paul's currently in, he's, he's definitely the, the, the reigning champ, but yeah, I've been in uh, several. My first girlfriend was, she was from Iceland, and uh, we met in the States, and then I, I went to, sometimes she would go out to Iceland, or other times I would go back to the States. Uh, or sorry, to Korea, and then she would be in the U.S. and such. So like, we would definitely have very long distance. And uh, or like, uh, my ex was also from Britain. I've had another ex who was from Korea, and all that stuff. My current girlfriend's from Korea, and so uh, we've had a little bit of long distance. So um, yeah, I, I know how to handle it. But usually with all these women, what they have in common is that we've all been together a very long time before like we get into uh, long distance. And so. Um, I, I definitely not months, like one year or so. Been interesting. I know how to how to uh, keep talking to them. I, I send them good morning messages as soon as they wake up. Uh, we'll call, video call, make uh, messages, uh, 
photos, videos, we'll watch movies online, you know, certain things, order them food, just random things like that, just to, just to keep it in. Yeah, it does work. It's worked for me. It's worked for Paul. You, you, for you can. Uh, not for me, man. <laughs> hey, I'm serious. Like, long distance relationships, they just don't match my personality type because I'm, I'm a very, uh, Straightforward person, you say? Uh, well, I mean, that, but also, I'm just, like, whatever is in front of me, that's my shiny object for the moment. That's it. And out of sight, out of mind. Like, I don't I don't have that kind of, like, uh, thoughtful personality mm -hmm. type of, like, oh, I just had an idea. I bet she would like this. I just don't, I don't have that that instinct in me. And so long distance relationships just don't match my personality type. Uh, and I know that everybody needs to know what they are good at and what they're not. And then like, don't try to do things that, you know, you can't do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, especially at your age, like friends only do the things that you know, you can do well. Right. Yeah. So got, it, it's also like, I mean, you're also really young. And so I, right, you know, thinking about a long distance relationship at your age, it's like neutering yourself. It's like watching porn with your hands tied behind your back. Like, why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, it's like you got better things to do than to just, I'm going to wait for the other girl or the other, on the other side of the continent. No. That, right. Thank you for holding me in the word edgelord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, exactly. You know, it's literally you're edging the whole time. And you know, now you can't go to a bar. You can't go to the club. You can't do anything. You can't talk to women. And, you know, a year goes by. Then she breaks up with you because, you know, she was doing the things that you weren't doing. Right. Uh, at, at your age, Antonio, just skip it. Right. Don't yeah. don't don't bother long distance. No, it's no. Not, it wasn't a suggestion. It was just a hypothetical scenario. Right. If that ever happens. You know, I, I'm also skeptical about long distance relationship because I also have more of your philosophy, Jack. If I see that thing, I want it here, right? I want that shiny thing here with me. That's the thing. Exactly. Yeah, really, that's, Anyone that's in a long distance relationship will have the same feeling. It's just, it becomes an acceptable situation for a limited period of time. Mm. Uh, in your case, I, I would say like you live in Italy, like the only way you realistically get into a long distance relationship is you start dating someone that is an exchange student at the university. Yeah. That's like, yeah. or someone, because yeah, that, that is a me. person you can date long enough for it to realistically go into the seriousness that it needs to be to actually succeed. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I get your point. You're right. I mean, I... I've had quite, I've met some students from different countries who were doing this exchange year stuff. Apparently Sometimes, some Germans. No, 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 French people. <laughs> I mean, oh. I don't deal with the French a bit, no, I'm, I'm joking, of course. But the way, <laughs> let's just say that um, us Italians and French people, we have like a love and hate relationship and stuff, so. Everybody has that with the French. Except for Caesar. <laughs> no, no, I love French girls. <laughs> oh, whenever we uh, finish, who am I kidding? I love all women. <laughs> whenever we finish the stream tonight, remind me to tell you my French joke because I have a French joke, but it is very off color, and I will not tell that one on stream. Yeah, I was about to. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say something about the French. I was like, oh shit, it's live. <laughs> we, we 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 can return to that later. Let's go ahead and hit the next question. Uh, what you got for us, Paul? Yeah, give me a second. Um, should you limit your expressiveness when texting to a girl with limited English to avoid confusion? Yeah. How I mean, are you expressive when texting, though? Yeah. Yeah, just... and also, why are you expressive? Yeah, like I was gonna say, just kind of like stop all of this. Like I hate these questions because it's like, well, obviously these questions were submitted before the lesson, right? But just stop. Uh, 
here's a better idea. If you want to express an emotion to her, send it as a GIF. Just do that yeah. instead. Because images can be understood regardless of language. And if you send a, a, a good GIF, then you get the expression across. Mm. I wouldn't emoji works too. Yeah, emojis, right? Depending on what you're doing, right? I don't know. Americans fucking suck at emojis. They they use like the, the emojis that are on the base keyboard. And it's like, ah, it's terrible. Koreans are emoji pros, man. Oh, it's just like Kakao is is a treasure trove. And honestly, I might be the best among them. I sometimes I see advice online that other people give, especially this is Americans to Americans, and they say things like, don't text with emojis. And I'm just sitting here and I'm like, it's only because you guys fucking suck at it, right? Yeah. Because y'all are using shitty stuff. Listen, my Street Fighter 2 emojis, they win every fucking time. Yeah, I have like three sets, four sets of gorilla emojis. They always work great. They fit every occasion. I even the use gorilla my emojis work perfectly. The Star Wars yeah. emojis, right? Like, look, there are so many good ones that you know, if, if you know how to use them well, a properly timed emoji beats any words that you could possibly send. Same thing, though, with a properly timed GIF or a properly timed image. Sure. Yeah, I, I know we went over this last time I was on this stream and asked, like, how to talk to a girl with, like, limited English. And I said, like, you know, dumb it down, like, like a Marvel movie for Chinese audiences. Just dumb it down. Make it as easily translatable as possible. No metaphors, no idioms, no sayings, no... Anything like nothing really yeah. American. Or really English. just say what you want to say. Yeah, I'm at I'm at work. You like that? You just, the translator cannot fuck it up. English uses a ton of idioms, and you don't really realize it until you start talking to people who don't speak English natively, and it's it's just it's wild how much we use. Uh, Not to mention the slang. Yeah, and slang as well. If, yeah, especially if you're like having a more fluent conversation with an English speaker. But mm -hmm. I think if you go back, like for, yes, for English speaking natives, that mm -hmm. is probably the hardest thing to realize. Mm -hmm. For me, yeah. who speaks English as a second language, the idioms are very clear. Sure. In comparison What's your first language to, again? My first language is Norwegian, of course. Oh, yeah, Norwegian. <laughs> He's a Ouija. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to, to go further with this point, I mean, like we've all talked to Brits, right? You know, and they mm -hmm. say their own slang that we're just like, wait, what the hell is that? No, I gotta be honest. Yeah. Whenever, whenever I speak to a British person, I don't understand shit. Yeah, like, I can yeah. understand. A northerner cannot understand a southerner, and vice versa, right? Yeah. Then you got the Irish, and you got the New Zealanders, and Australians, and the Americans. You have New Yorkers, and then you have the South, and you have west coast it's all different right so if you use any of that stuff and we can't understand it amongst each other what makes you think you know some korean girl who's still studying english you think she's gonna stand a chance no dumb That's, it down make it crystal clear yeah back to like speak exactly what you want to say with dictionary english hi mm. let's meet Dinner? exactly yeah 6 p.m yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go can't fuck it up so one of the things, and I've, I've talked about this before, but I think it's been a while since I actually went into this on the stream, but you can, you can speak English in a way that they can understand you if, you if you're careful about how you actually say the sentences. And so uh, choosing which words to accentuate, choosing when to speed up and slow down, choosing you know like which things to to really bring out so for example let's say that i want to say the phrase and this is tough like this would be considered difficult english for somebody who's just learning english right they have basic level english if i said something like listen i know this amazing wine bar that has a shiraz that's going to make you believe in god that is a tough english phrase to process for somebody who's learning English. But if you express it, even using those same words, but if you punch the right words and you're like, listen, I know this wine bar. You like wine, right? Yeah? 
Okay, wait. Red or white? Red? Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that you weren't a child. Okay, cool. So, red wine. This wine bar, they have a Shiraz. It's so amazing. It'll make you believe in God. Use the same thing, but you just put it in little pauses. Clarify. Yeah, we're still on the same page. We're still on the same page. Wine bar. Yeah, you like wine? Yeah, white. Red or white? Basic, easy questions to make sure that they're following along and it cuts up the processing that is required for them. These small little inserts make it easy for you to communicate with them without having to talk like an idiot. Like don't, don't, don't do like me like wine. You wine? Blah, right? Don't fucking yeah, don't do that. That. yeah, but you, you can also like you could also rephrase that to remove course, the idiom, right? So you could yeah. say something like Absolutely. I know this amazing wine bar that serves the best red wine you Ooh. ever tried. Right. That would be you should do that, but I'm just using this as an example of like even if maybe as you're talking, you can't think of an easier way to say this thing, still just break it up into smaller bite-sized chunks. From love Check to understanding and, you know, and it makes it that much easier, right? Yeah. Uh, let's go on to the next question. Yeah, the last question that I got from the kid was, "How do you? What are clear telltale telltale signs that a girl is going to flake when you're texted? Like setting up a date through a text, and then you just have this feeling that she's going to flake. When is that? There are so many. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Okay." Here's the, the first one that came to my mind is if I proposed the date, let's say I said like, oh, let's go to this wine bar. I know it's really good. Uh, let's go on Thursday. Let's say we'll meet at Hongdae Station exit nine at 8 p.m. on Thursday. And then if she just answers back with a thumbs up emoji, she's flaking, right? Like yeah. that was the first thing that popped into my head was like she doesn't even bother using words. To confirm she's so out <laughs> uh, another thing i've noticed with the time there hasn't been a lot of times i've been flaked on but there's been a couple and for the ones where i will make it very very clear that i am busy like my first time i am free is gonna be say thursday if it's three okay. days in the future and then i'm gonna say so if i don't message you before i will still be there is it like I am not going to check in to confirm that you are showing up? I will be there. Mm. Every single time I've done that, the girl themselves has checked in on the day mm. to make sure we are still on. That girl I know shows up. That's interesting. Yeah. The girl that stays quiet, that's mm. when, okay, then I'll send something like maybe two or three hours before. So, then I'll just say I, I'm trying out try, trying on my pink dress. Are you ready? <laughs> because that generates that response, and they get if they were thinking about flaking, they might actually get reinterested because at least I have humor. Right? Yeah, you entertained that. That that's the whole point, right? Like yeah. that's literally what girls text for is for entertainment. And that's why they go on dates too. It's for entertainment. It's because they're bored, man. Mm. Right? Like, as the as I was presenting this stuff earlier about the texting, your competition in the text world is very high. And it's only high because most men don't know how to text that way because that's not how we fucking text each other. Right? Like, we don't text for fun. Like, I love Paul. We're great friends. Anything in the world for him. Also, I only text him about once a week as we're getting ready for the stream. Like we, we don't text unless there's a reason to exchange information. We don't text for fun. That's just not how guys talk. And so same like, thing here. If you're trying to weeks, text. Yeah. For weeks on end, like the conversation is either feedback on the core stuff yeah. Or it is something like, it sounds like, hey, big pimpin, you're going to be able to join today? That's the plan. <laughs> or That's it. It's, 
pure information. This week. And this week, you good for today, Big Sexy? Yep, yep. Yeah. <laughs> There's like you know, no information. That? I I kind of resonate with what you say with girl finding, texting, uh, entertainment thing. Because I also saw a lot of girls, even the more younger ones, like 17, 16 years old, talking to each other, even when they're two feet apart, laughing, but they're actually yeah. talking to each other on the phone. Yeah, through yeah, text. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's actually interesting. Yes, this is, this is literally their form of social interaction. Because they... Because they are raised on it, this is how they feel comfortable communicating. And what I'm what I'm trying to say here is that you will never be able to play in that same court. Like I said in the in the lesson, that's like walking onto the basketball court with the 86 bulls. You're fucked. You have no chance, right? So don't try to play in there. Don't try to do the, the entertaining chit chat thing. Just bring it to the date because in person you have a massive advantage because you actually know how to talk to people. You know how to communicate in real life, IRL, and they don't. Yeah. And, and the other advantage is that when you are in person, you can make sure your their attention isn't divided. Yes. That's another big one as well. Yeah, makes sense. Do we have a, I got, any other questions? I got on that. What? I got. I, I went sidetracked on this. What? What were we talking about just a minute ago? Signs, like texting signs that girls are gonna flake on your date. Right, yeah. She's gonna flake. Caesar, do you have any? Uh for me, it's always when when they just get really quiet, or yeah. where they're they're. The responses to you go from being like really active and keeping a conversation going to just being like really slow, few and far between, terse. And I'm like, yeah, or shorter I don't know. and shorter answers. Shorter, shorter. I'm like, hey, are we still meeting tonight? No response. I'm like, okay, fuck you. I'm just gonna hang with Jack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that oh, is why sorry. I just don't respond. Gotta, that yeah, that is why I make that like to tell them like I might be busy, so I am not gonna text you to check that we're still going. I'm just going to be there. Mm. So you can sure. choose whether you want to show up or not, but I am definitely mm. in my mind. I got a plan B for what I'm doing if she doesn't show up. Exactly. Now, I I have a, I have a theory that I have no way to prove this, but except for my own experience, which doesn't really apply out at scale. But I've always known when a girl was going to flake. Like, and I, I mean, I, I don't mean like on the day of, I mean like even when I asked her out, even when she said yes, there were signs that I picked up on that I knew that maybe I couldn't define, but they were there and I knew she was going to flake every single time. And I genuinely believe that guys know when a girl is going to flake but they lie to themselves about it because they say oh but this girl seems nice she would never do that when i think at least to me with that if i talk to the girl in person when i ask her out then i'll definitely know over text it's a little more it, sometimes it can be a little bit harder to see through mm. Yeah, it definitely can be. I don't know. I'm, but all that aside, if you follow the 72-hour rule, I had like, uh, I think I, I told you about this. Whenever I actually wrote that article the first time, when I realized it, I went back through hundreds of texts that I'd had with girls to set up dates. And I just like wrote down, I was like, okay, cool. We met on this day. I tried to set up a date at this on this day. Did she show up? And then did, as Julius put it, success happen? And like, I just, I jotted it all down as data points. as hundreds of data points. And what I found was that if I set the date to be within 72 hours of when we first met or matched, I had a 90% chance of having 
a successful date. But from, from four days to seven days, that dropped from 90% to 50%. And from seven days on, it was down at like 10%. Mm -hmm. It was a wild drop off from three days to four days. And then it was a wild drop off after one week. Why do you think uh, that though? Like, do you think they get bored of waiting or? It's Recent attention time. span. It comes what? down to attention span. Yeah. If you, simple explanation, attention span, she forgets, she sees shiny new object, she sees funny new guy, whatever. That's a simple explanation. Uh, a more detailed explanation would simply be um, recency bias. So we always think that, that whatever the most recent thing is that we have seen or felt or experienced or thought, that that is the new good one. Hmm. And it doesn't matter if it's better or not, but whatever the most recent thing is, our mind has a tendency to think that that thing is necessarily better. So if I set up a date, let's say that I meet a girl today, and then I set up a date with her next Friday. I'm busy all this weekend, and I'm busy all next week, but I can meet you next Friday. What are the chances that over the next eight days, she doesn't meet anyone. Very, very low, right? Now, what are the chances that if she meets someone that she will think that they are more interesting, not because they necessarily are, but because they're there right now, very, very high. So the less time lag you have between plan and reward, the better. Right. The same way that like um, if somebody wanted to hire you for a one day job. Right. They said, like, listen, Antonio, I need you to come and uh, paint my house tomorrow and I'll pay you a thousand dollars to do it. But I need to pay you 30 days from now. Or. Somebody else offers you the same job, maybe even for $800, but they say, but I'll pay you at the end of the day. You take yeah. the second job, right? Like immediacy also matters. Or you go into a job interview and at the end you say, but I am going to need to know within two to three days because I have another offer that is expiring. Exactly. It creates this feeling urgency. of urgency. And that is... The same reverse of that feeling is the time importance and the new and shiny object thing. Mm. Yeah, which exactly. Is, which is the feature that you're playing playing at in, if you go for psychology of it. Exactly. Yeah, I think that I think that's that's ideal. Is honestly setting the date up, and even three days is like that's it's becoming too long. Yeah, right, because like attention spans are shrinking. Um, yep. So even three days is really pushing it. Yeah. Same yeah, day. They're going to shrink so much so that maybe cool it scale up to one day. Maybe you set up dates after a couple of days, she gets bored, she gets another guy and stuff. Like, I mean, the, the thing that girls treat you like, I don't want to say toys, but like entertainment things, right? For when they feel bored and stuff. I don't know if you guys can hear me well because I'm having problems with the microphone, but anyway, yeah. Uh, I think is because of the condition of social media, especially for girls, is, uh, at least. Because from TikTok, Instagram, all these things. Because of the attention span so shortage, they tend to treat us men too like those reels. Like I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say here, but mm. I feel like yeah. the new generations are putting like less importance on things. Right? I'm less pretty important. sure if you went back 20 years, you could easily schedule a date for next week or the week after. 
But well, 20 years ago, the three-day rule was the opposite. It was don't call a girl for three days exactly. so that you don't seem needy or desperate, right? But I understand what you're saying, Antonio. There's no point in in saying like, oh, well, they do this because of da 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 It's like, okay, cool, maybe, maybe not. Uh, doesn't matter. Here's the situation. To solve it, this is what you do. Three days, that's it. Right, and you just just keep your eye on the prize, and you just focus on that, and none of the other stuff matters, right? Like, yeah. trust me, I'm happy to sit around and drink with you and yell about how Instagram is fucking social poison. I agree entirely, but it doesn't actually help us to solve any of the problems, right? It's like, okay, cool, just fucking look at the problem, solve the problem. That's it. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> Uh, Paul, do we have anything in the chat? No, we do not. Okay. Well, guys, if you have any questions in the chat, now's your last chance. Type them in now. Uh, Antonio, do you have any more questions or thoughts before we move on? No, I think we've covered, I covered pretty much anything I had to ask, at least. Okay. Awesome. Well, then, in that case, I think that unless we have, uh, unless we have something coming in in the chat, which if we do, you guys better let us know now. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and wrap this guy up. Um, so for those of you who have watched so far, thank you. I appreciate it. And if I could ask you for just one more favor before we go, please look down below this video right now and see that little thumbs up. Hit that thing and turn it blue because blue means good. Truly, though, I do consider it a personal favor, and I really appreciate it when you guys hit the like button. It helps the channel grow. It helps uh, it helps us get this message out there, and it helps guys do better so that we don't have as many incels cruising around, stabbing people and doing weird shit like that. So uh, thank you guys for joining the stream today. I really appreciate it. And a special thank you to my player panel here, Paul, Julius, Antonio. Much love to all you guys. Thank you so much for joining in. And thank you guys for watching. And until next week, boys.